Hey, Dr. Matt here. So let's talk about iron deficiency, anemia versus iron deficiency. These often get mixed up, overlooked, mismanaged, and uh, I think we've got to get this right because there's a lot of people's lives who are not having any fun whatsoever because of fatigue and you know all the, the issues related to iron deficiency. And it's simply because we are not appropriately diagnosing and, and treating these people based on what they truly have. So iron deficiency is when you do not have enough iron. This is best demonstrated via a test called a, a ferritin blood test. So ferritin is a, essentially a storage depot for iron in the body and uh, it has a few other, other um, roles as well. But uh, if you check your ferritin levels and your ferritin levels are low, say below 30, then there's like a 99% chance that you are iron deficient. Um, and you're considered to be frankly iron deficient if it is below 30. Um, and you know, your bone marrow, they're gonna stop producing quite as many red blood cells um, and such. So most people will feel best around an, an, a ferritin of about 70. Now on the other hand, so that was iron deficiency. On the other hand, we have anemia, uh, and this is a lack of hemoglobin. So you'll find this test, hemoglobin test, it's usually on the, the complete blood count, CBC, and it'll be like three down after you see your, your white blood cells, red blood cells, you'll see hemoglobin. See, I got it highlighted right there, hemoglobin. <clears throat> and hemoglobin is crucial for basically ushering oxygen around our body and then pulling carbon dioxide from our body and taking it back out of us. So this protein, if, there's not, if it's not sufficient, we're gonna be in trouble and we are going to have what we call anemia. So that's anemia. Now, if you have low hemoglobin and low iron, you have iron deficiency anemia. So I hope we got that down now. Low iron, low hemoglobin, iron deficiency anemia. Just low iron, we would call that iron deficiency. So in my experience, iron deficiency is far more common than uh, iron deficiency anemia because, uh, you know, if you have the CBC, the complete blood count is run all the time, everywhere. I mean, pretty much if you get a blood test done, no matter what you have, you're probably gonna get a CBC done. However, very few people or very few doctors will run a ferritin at that same time. So, you know, people can go years without receiving a proper diagnosis, proper treatment, uh, because their doctor has not run a ferritin level and they don't realize that this person is actually iron deficient. That's why they're complaining about their, uh, you know, this litany of symptoms. They're iron deficient, even though they're not anemic. They're not iron, they don't have iron deficiency anemia. So it hasn't manifested on their complete blood count. And then, so, you know, often patients come in, we run a CBC uh, and we run a ferritin and their hemoglobin's fine. It's in normal range. But the patient, of course, is experiencing all this lack in their life. Um, and we find that their ferritin level is depressed, it's low. And so we, we get the ferritin level up, guess what? They feel fantastic because now they have sufficient iron and you need iron for all manner of activity in the human body. Uh, you know, it, it is such a crucial nutrient. And, you know, your hair might be falling out, you're tired all the time your uh, anxious, panic attacks, chest pain, shortness of breath, performance lagging, could just be low iron, even though your hemoglobin is normal. So I have an example of a patient of mine who had, you'll see right here, actually iron deficiency anemia, and she manifested as a hemoglobin of 11 here. Uh, and uh, you know her red blood, cell, red blood cell counts are as low as well. So that is actually be considered anemia. And we know, and then we know it's iron deficiency anemia because her ferritin was at 22 at that same time. So she has iron deficiency anemia. And you know, this individual uh, had an incredible time as far as being able to get enough food in, had small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which was, um, you know, she was down to just eating like three or four foods a day. Crazy, right? Um, and uh, you know, she'd been with other practitioners trying all this other stuff. Uh, trying lots of other irons to get her iron levels up, you know, and it was just causing uh, grave difficulty, lots of, you know, nausea, 
digestive discomfort, bloating, all those kind of things, headaches. Until thankfully she was, she actually did get that blood vitality, which we talk about often, um, after seeing the results and, uh, you'll notice that her, um, next results, her hemoglobin, red blood cells, hematocrit, they're now normalized. Hemoglobin is up to 12.5, which is in normal range. And her ferritin came up to 33, um, from 22, which is awesome. And so, you know, just that little upkick in iron levels took her from a state of iron deficiency anemia into a state of iron sufficiency um, and no longer having the anemia, though, um, you know, optimally she'll, she'll feel best when we get these ferritin levels up to, you know, 50, 60, 70, potentially even up to 100. So another patient of mine that um, would have slipped right under the radar um, quite easily if uh, we weren't checking, our, checking the whole gamut of things, being holistic in our approach. Uh, so she had a hemoglobin of 13, which is considered great, fantastic, normal, right? Um, no anemia there, of course, uh, but her ferritin was at nine. And guess what? She was experiencing everything we talk about as far as iron deficiency. You would think she was anemic. You know, she has fatigue, brain fog, uh, just feels weak all the time, but you know, standard medicine would say, you're fine. Your CBC is fine. You're not anemic, you know, care of life. Um, thankfully we, we found that. And, um, you can see now her hemoglobin was at 14.3. It went up a little bit when she started taking iron, specifically blood vitality. And then her ferritin, you know, it's up to 62 now, which is fantastic, right? From nine to 62. That's literally going to change a person's life. They're going to feel so much more awesome and their performance is going to go up drastically. So the key is to make sure you're looking at both iron deficiency by getting your ferritin levels checked uh, right along with that CBC. I mean, a CBC is a really important test. High value, you can gather tons of information from a complete blood count. Um, but often it's challenging to know why the complete blood count is off if you don't do these extra tests, like say B12 or folate or, or iron ferritin in this case. So the reason you can have, you know, all the symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, but not, or, but not actually demonstrate anemia as part of your complete blood count or not show up as a, a low hemoglobin, uh, is because red blood cells turn over about every 90 to 120 days. So that's like every three to four months, right? So if your red blood cells are only turning over every three to four months, then your iron could be low. You know, your, your ferritin could be low, but the red blood cells haven't caught up with that. You know, they don't, they don't realize it. So, you know, it could be six months, eight months, nine months, 12 months down the road before you actually would see on a complete blood count that your hemoglobin was now low because you basically need iron. Iron is necessary for creating hemoglobin. That's a relationship there. So as there is less iron available, that slowly but surely is going to dwindle away, kind of kind of have this trickle down effect of lowering hemoglobin, but but that can take a while, and so you can have iron deficiency, all the gamut of symptoms related to iron deficiency, and yet not all the way be to the disease state that we'd suggest or the pathology that's considered iron deficiency anemia. So that's why across the board, literally every single person that comes in is going to get their ferritin checked along with their CBC. Uh, until we can tell it, yeah, they have a great ferritin level because uh, you can easily be essentially in a state of iron deficiency, look anemic, and have a regular CBC while all, all along you have iron deficiency going on. And the lack of iron is the actual disease. That's, that's the problem. We need to get the iron levels up. Once your, once your iron goes up, man, your hemoglobin's going to be great, of course, right? And um, you're going to get all that litany of symptoms. Um, the fatigue, brain fog, um, palpitations, racing heart, muscle pains, you know, underperforming, all that is just going to slowly but surely disappear in relation to iron deficiency. So unless, you know, unless you went to a doctor who is running uh, more than a CBC, you're probably pretty ticked off at the standard medical model, uh, how, how, we, how we do things in standard medicine. And I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that because uh, there's there are plenty of doctors out there who are going to look take that one more step. They're not going to tell you you're just depressed, you're just anxious, you just have um, um, you're you're just out of shape, <laughs> and, and that's why you're breathing you're short on breath and and those kind of things. That's why you're fatigued. That's why you're lethargic. That's why you have no motivation. So do not lose hope. 
Um, there are plenty of doctors out there who will listen to you, who are willing to just you know do one more check, one more little ferritin test. Um, because I mean a ferritin, I forget exactly, but I think it's like three, six, seven, eight, nine bucks. It's so inexpensive to get that ferritin checked, and a, a CBC has, I believe, is like seven dollars and fifty cents. So virtually, it's it's within the realm of all of us to have the potential to get those things checked. It's not like they're they're way out there, so expensive. Um, these tests, totally totally reasonable and literally could change your existence. If you're a female, definitely could change your existence. If you're a menstruating female, probably like 100% is gonna change your existence. And if you're a menstruating, highly active female or you're pregnant and you're not getting your ferritin levels checked, I'm gonna say that's crazy because you are missing out on so much health opportunity uh, if indeed you know you get that ferritin level checked and find out, wow, it's not in the optimal range. Uh, life could be so much better, so much easier, because you're gonna have so much more energy, so much more vigor, so much more vitality, you know, that those feelings of motivation are gonna be so much higher. You're gonna be perform better, whether it's momhood, whether it's uh, your athletics, your running, your workouts, uh, just your thinking, your creativity, your work, it can all be better. All right, I'm Dr. Matt, like, share, send this around to your friends who may be anemic, iron deficient, um, struggling fatigue, brain fog, headaches, especially frontal headaches uh, or you know body aches, underperforming, shortness of breath, because you know what? You could literally give them gold um, by getting this information to them. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.